it took me about a year until I really started making money. Um, after about a year, I hit my biggest month trading where I made $60,000 in one month. Welcome everyone back to the Words of Wisdom podcast. We're on day two of the FX Summit and we are joined by the one, the only Profit Society. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for, for walking over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah, no, that's a pleasure, a pleasure. Why, why don't you just do a, a nice brief uh, introduction, um, each one of you, and just kind of how you got to where you are today, as brief as possible, but um, mm. I know it's hard to do. But yeah. no doubt, you know, this will be like a nice segue into a, a full length episode one day. So just yeah, a nice brief introduction, each one of you will be good. Um, so first things first, thank you for having us. My name is Kyle Persad, AKA Kyle Hustles on Instagram. Um, so for me, myself, I got started in trading when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, I was looking up on Google how to make money online mm -hmm. because- Your camera's over there, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so, <my bad. laughs> I was tricking you over there. No. Yeah, the camera's so, this one here. So I got started in trading when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, I was working a job at a grocery store named Publix. Um, I was really only getting like five to 10 hours a week. So I really wasn't making the money that I really wanted and truly, truly desired. And I was limited because of my age. Mm -hmm. And I always thought like age was just a number. So I was looking up online, how do I make, how do I make money online? Cause I'm always online. I'm always playing video games. I'm always doing things online. There has to be a way to make money online. Mm -hmm. So at 15, I started looking up ways to make money. I would try it out drop shipping, Amazon FBA. I tried out almost everything. And I think like the third or fourth thing that I tried out was trading. Once I saw trading and I saw it as a way that if I can click a button, buy, and you click the button, buy, we can both make money because we're in the same exact market, especially if the market does exactly what we both want to do. I saw if you were to open up a drop shipping store and we both make the same product, my store could get no sales and yours could make six figures. It's mm. like the opportunity for just profit is just like there's less variables that can mess it up mm. in the trading market if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I saw that as an opportunity that, hey, if I just do what I'm supposed to do and do it the right way, then mm -hmm. I'll make money. Mm -hmm. So fast forward a year later, it took me about a year until I really started making money. Um, after about a year, I hit my biggest month trading where I made $60,000 in one month. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was 16 years old and I made what my teachers were making in one year, in one month. So all of a sudden, I'm like thinking different. I'm not listening to my teachers. I'm not listening and doing what I used to do at the rate I was doing it, like studying hard, working hard at my job. Like I started putting all my full focus into trading, mm -hmm. started putting all my full focus into investing. And then I went all in. After I had that big month, about a couple weeks later, I quit my job. You know, I kind of eased off on classes and I started putting my full focus into trading mm -hmm. and educating people how to trade because I knew that if I could do it, everybody else could do it as well. Mm -hmm. And that fast forward led me to where I am here now with the Profit Society, still trading full time, still impacting people and still giving back to the people in the ways that I know best. Mm -hmm. Sounds incredible, man. And how about yourself? Yeah, uh, so my name's uh, Anthony Scaglione. I go by Biscag uh, all over social media. I've been trading for about nine years now, coming up on almost 10. Uh, I did get my start in a little bit of the stock market, mm. quickly moved over to the Forex market just because there was more opportunity throughout the day to actually trade, right? 24 or five markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was really attractive to me. Uh, again, I was coming from the space of working at retail as well. Mm -hmm. I used to work at Apple. Um, took me about four years to become profitable. So it's been definitely a journey. It's about half my, my journey has been uh, you know, profitable. So that's been blessed. Uh, quit my job at the end of 2019 going into 2020, and it's just been full time ever since. Uh, but yeah, big in the Forex markets, big in crypto, mm -hmm. and just accumulating as many assets as we can now. Definitely. How about yourself? It's amazing. Yeah, and I'm gonna make mine uh, a lot quicker. I mean, it's very simple. I started trading for, I was trading about eight years ago is when I really found out about it. Um, I went through the same exact route as most people, Googled it, YouTubed it, try to learn through those methods. Baby Pips was very big in the beginning, uh, just to learn obviously the key foundations. And then eventually, after three years of me trying to do it by myself, I finally found some mentorship and some guidance. Mm -hmm. 
that didn't necessarily teach me things I didn't know, but they structured it in a way that allowed me to make it into more of a profitable manner. Yes. Right? Because there's a lot of things that we know, but knowing and doing, knowing and experiencing are completely different things. Yeah. So I was the one trader that for the past two, three years, I was learning a lot, but I really wasn't executing the way that I thought I should have been. Mm -hmm. So I was obviously not seeing success because of that. But once I found mentorship and once I actually got more sort of confirmations, that's when my confidence went through the roof and everything started going crazy. So nine years later, now I'm here, you know, with the Profit Society team. And uh, that's been our journey, man, just trying to impact, expose more people, impact Definitely. them in uh, a bunch of different ways. How, how did you free meet them? Yeah. So I actually known him for pretty much my whole journey. You know, yeah. um, back in the day, there was this account. I don't even know if we even want to bring it nah, up. Nah, not probably not. Right? Probably not. There was this one individual that was very popular on Periscope like eight, nine years ago. Periscope? Is... Yeah. It was yeah, that. Like, it that's how you know we, like, we went They're probably gone Periscope. now anyway. You should mention them. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Right? So we pretty much got exposed to trading through this individual. Mm. And ever since then, we just always stayed connected. You know, uh, whether he went a certain way, I went a certain way, we always came back and just stayed connected. Mm. You know, because I always looked up to his knowledge in this space. So I always just learned a lot from him as well through the journey. And I may, I've known him for about four years now, three, four years. Again, like he said, you know, we were obviously a part of, well, not obviously, but we were a part of IML, right? Mm. So I met him through IML because we were indirectly on opposite teams. Mm. Yeah. But I, always, <laughs> yeah. but I always got stuck with him because he focused a lot on the trading. Yeah. yeah. And at 15 years old, to come in and have that type of focus yeah. and dedication to learn something like this, mm -hmm. that is impressive, right? So me and him just always stay connected because of that as well. So that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So then how did you come up with the idea of like the Profit Society and uh, putting that together? I mean, I would say we were all kind of doing our own thing. So yeah. the mission has always been the same for all of us. Mm -hmm. Really just trying to expose people, help people. Uh, myself, in particular, I love helping the struggling trader. Mm. You know, so people that are, you know, already self-motivated to learn, already putting in their chart time. Yeah. Um, and then again, our, our visions were already kind of aligned, doing our own thing and decided like, you know, why not give the people that follow us more value by expanding that out, you know, three, four times. Yeah. Um, and just allowed to us, us to you know cover more of the market, be mm -hmm. active at more times of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's really kind of how it became about. It's just yeah. like taking the visions that we had individually, merging them together, and just providing more value that way. Yeah, definitely. And even, even before we separated, so just a, a little bit about my background as well. Like I wasn't just a part of IML, I was actually one of the educators. Okay. So I most recently left because I wanted to pursue a different avenue where I felt like I was able to control the education that was being prioritized, we'll put it that way, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much how that happened, right? I ended up leaving, you know, took a step back. Um, again, I, I owed a lot to the platform, but it was time for me to develop wings and do my own thing, right? Definitely. And then that's when I partnered up with these guys because I knew that they were already doing their own thing. And I'm like, it makes a lot of sense, but let's combine. And if I'm going to do something outside of that to create a brand for myself, I want to make sure I'm partnered with educational people, mm -hmm. right? That I know have the value to help us really build mm -hmm. this thing up. Oh, in terms of like IML, for example, what, you know, you, there's like a, there's people, loads of people went into it. Yeah, oh, even yeah. in the UK, it was quite a global thing. It was a huge thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah I see the positive side that it exposed a lot of people to trading that might not have got exposed to trading otherwise. Yep. Uh, but obviously, you see the negative side of what people say is the negative side in terms of um, the sort of the, the marketing, right? Of course, yeah. The, the, the sort of downlines, et cetera. What are your thoughts, obviously, being in that experience, as you said, an educator in the space? Um, you know, what were your experience? in that side of things, you know? What was your thoughts in that side of things? I mean, for me personally, I really prioritize the education and the trading aspect. Um, I personally never hit chairman, even with being in a title of mm. an educator, you would think it would be a lot easier. Yeah. And it should have been, right? But for me, my focus and my priority has always been on not just building a team, but educating the people that join the team. Mm -hmm. And even when I'm walking throughout this event, the number one thing that people come up to me and say is, oh, yo, I remember learning from you and I am. I remember learning from you from this platform, you know, so it's more so people understood that for me and the way I look at it, it's all about education at the end of the day. And that's what I prioritize, which is probably why I never actually hit chairman. Mm -hmm. I prioritize on educating, teaching, yeah. actually making people self-sufficient. That's it, man. That's it. And it's good to hear because obviously, like I said, there's, there's two sides to everything. I think there's positives and negatives to everything. And like I said, I think the expansion that it provided in yeah. terms of the trading space and the amount of people it was able to reach mm -hmm. really may have been, been able to make things like this happen, make things like, you know, the expansion in prop firms, for example, happen, etc. Oh, yeah. The man 100%. himself. Hello. You're going to have to come see us. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to come say hi to 
my yeah, brother right here. When you get a chance, you have to come sit down, okay? Yeah, if, sure. if, if you get a chance. I definitely will. Make sure to click, like, and subscribe. Words of Wisdom, the best podcast out there. Let's go. <laughs> the man himself. Yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. It's amazing. Roy Dunya. Yeah. 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 No problem. Oh, mm -hmm. man. He's, I've seen him running around uh, the past two, three yeah. days. Yeah, busy man, busy yeah. man. Busy man. But no, he put all this together, which is uh, another thing I wanted to ask you, actually. It's a perfect pivot there by Roy. Um, but like, you know, we talked about you know, last year you weren't here. So obviously being here at the FX Summit, what's it like? What's it like obviously being here? Uh, how have you found it so far? It's different. It's, it's completely different. I tell all of you guys that are watching from YouTube, that are watching from Instagram, that are watching from home, you can see how nice it is via the video. You can see the cars, the, the nice, you know, the nice fancy things, the people that you see all over. You can see that all over Instagram, but the one thing you can't, see over Instagram and over camera is the energy, mm. the the people that you'll run into, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's another thing, like just buying tickets for this event, right? A lot of people see that as a bill, but I see that as an investment. And honestly, I see that as an unpriceable investment. You can't put a price tag on coming to a room and being in an environment and being in a room where mm -hmm. you might turn around and bump shoulders with your favorite traders. Mm -hmm. You might turn around and hop into an, ele uh, an elevator and be right next to one of your favorite traders or a trader that you look up to that's making six, seven figures. I mean, just yesterday when we were on the boat, um, you know, I was literally just going into the elevator, going, going downstairs to like go sit down, find a place to sit down. And all of a sudden, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know her, um, Tori Trades, you know, mm -hmm. one of the top TikTok and Instagram social media traders just hopped in the elevator with us. And, you know, I couldn't help but just say what's up, you know, enjoy the content, enjoy what it is that you're doing. And a lot of you guys probably see people like my boy Riz. You guys probably see people like Tori, like Paladin, like Abel. You guys are probably seeing these people right now. You're watching us via this podcast. You're watching this via, via an Instagram video, whatever it is. But imagine if you were here mm. and you could literally just say what's up to Riz. Mm -hmm. You could literally just ask him, all the questions and you know give all the feedback that you've been wanting to give you've been mm -hmm. probably in the comment section you have probably been in his dms like asking yo what do you do for this what do you do for that yo maybe you should do this for the podcast maybe you need, you need to do a video like this for the podcast but if you were in person you would be getting that one-on-one -on -one communication you could probably even get some information that you wouldn't usually be getting online mm -hmm. yeah because there's some information and there's some secrets mm -hmm. that need to be kept for an in-person meeting like this so the price tag, there's no price tag. You can't put a price tag on being in an environment like this. Mm -hmm. If the price tag was $10,000 even, mm -hmm. I think it would still be worth it because the type of money and the type of wisdom that you would receive and the type of connections that you would receive is way well worth more over $10,000. You're going to make way more than that. You're going to make six, seven figures by being around people making six, seven figures. You're not going to make six, seven figures by just watching people make six and seven figures. You make that type of money based on the people that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. So surrounding yourself around an environment like this is exactly the reason why the people that are here are in the positions and are in the lifestyles that they're living. Facts. That's that's, that's the reason why you should be here. Hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. And you know, like as you said, the energy. That's not something you can really pick up through the through the content that will be put out. You know, the images, the videos, etc. And even for people like me, you know, being able to meet. Not only the say the influencers or people who are known, but even just meeting other traders, you know, and, and hearing their stories. For example, I, I met two uh, girls who I got on the podcast yesterday. I thought they were best friends, but they just met here, you know. And more than likely <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, after amazing. this, you know, like That's with amazing. your freeze connection, for yeah. example, you know, it could have easily have happened at an event like this, for example, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah, there'll be probably sure. people here coming yeah. to this event who now have made a lifetime friendship off the back of just coming here so it's incredible but one thing i yeah. want to ask you actually is like how how helpful has it been to have a, a unit you know like have a, a brotherhood if you will or or partners in your trading journey and and obviously running profit society i mean i think it's been great i mean you can lean on each other especially mm -hmm. when it comes to some of the stuff that we do in the live trade room mm -hmm. again we all view the market slightly different so you know to be able to you know if i don't see something you know kind of maybe kyle does maybe mm. able to see something that i don't uh, I would also say that we have a, a lot of healthy debates because yes. of that as well, because yeah. there's different viewpoints. 
we're always coming from an area of respect. Obviously, we're not trying to conflict with each other. Of course. Yeah. But there's a lot of conversations, again, that lead to just different viewpoints. And I think that helps out the people that are on the live trade room, mm -hmm. that are watching the educational sessions, because they're getting multiple perspectives mm -hmm. rather than this is the way it is and this is the way it has to be. Because with trading, there's just so many variables. So I think having other people to lean on uh, and get those different points of view, even if they're only slightly different, mm -hmm. uh, is, is still really good. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. And just to touch on what he said, too, like those debates, yeah. they get very heated. <laughs> but they can. Passionate. The, yeah, the passionate. best thing about it is. Yeah, they, they start throwing shots at each other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and again, it's never about competition with us, yeah. mm. it's more about understanding. Of course. So if you see a different perspective or you have a different perspective of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. then let's talk about it. Because I might have something different. And then. It's going to help us to see each other's side, but then the students who are there by default, yeah. it's just such a powerful, powerful dynamic that now they have access to. Definitely, definitely. And yeah, we're going to finish uh, because we keep these a bit shorter, right? But uh, we'll finish up with one question that I'll ask each of you. Well, I'll ask each of you a different question so that we have different answers. But I'll give you like the, what was your top three tips for traders to make progress? Because we're here at the FX Summit and uh, there's people from all different parts of the journey, mainly obviously people who are probably still on the come up. So as someone who's done that already, what would be your top three tips for people to progress in their journey? Number one, uh, for, for one of my top three tips, um, I would say is personal develop daily, man. Personal develop daily. Like it seems like such a like such a, a small thing to do, or you know, you may think like you're like personal development isn't something that you do once and you're personally developed, mm. right? You don't read a book once and watch an audio once and all of a sudden you're now personally developed. Mm -hmm. Like personal, develop, personal development is a continuous thing. Like you have to continue to read. You have to continue to watch the, the, the motivational tapes, the inspirational audios, the, the, the audio books. Like you have to continue to, to listen to these type of things because you've got to be feeding your mind daily. It's kind of mm -hmm. like feeding yourself, right? You may just eat a big meal and you're full, right? Mm -hmm. Just like personal development. You might read a big book and you feel full. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you're gonna have to feed yourself once again. Yeah. You're gonna have to retrain your mind once again, because mm -hmm. we're all human. We all forget 90% of the things that we don't write down. So I would say number one, continue to feed your mind daily. Never stop feeding your mind. Never stop personally developing yourself. Um, number two is, you know, you always win the battle as long as you don't quit. So as long as you don't quit, as long as you stay in the game, as long as you can live to trade another day, you've already won because 90, 95% of traders are in one year and by the next year they blew all their accounts and they don't have capital to trade another day, right? Or they don't, not even it's like they don't have capital, is they don't even have the will, strength, or mm -hmm. the effort to even keep going. Definitely. So I, I would say number two is stay in the game no matter what. That's, mm -hmm. that's my biggest tip. So stay in the game no matter what it takes. Whether you run out of money, that's fine. You can always get more money and, and trade. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. If you run out of the strength, that's fine. You can always gain back the strength. You can always get back the willpower. You may not have the willpower today, mm -hmm. but tomorrow or another day, you may have the willpower. Um, number three is just remain disciplined and consistent. Like, you know, it, it's, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard. You gotta understand what you're getting yourself into. You're getting yourself into something that's extremely hard to get extremely big rewards, mm -hmm. extremely big benefits, right? You cannot get extremely big rewards, extremely big income, extremely big benefits, extremely big lifestyle like this. Yeah. So easy. It's mm -hmm. not like if it was easy, this easy, everybody would be doing it and getting these type of rewards. Mm -hmm. The reason why it has value is because of how hard it is and how difficult it is to get. Mm -hmm. Anything that's easy to get has no value. It's easy to, to, to go work a job. It's easy to go do certain things. It's easy to go and you know mow the grass and make some money. Like that's the most easiest mm -hmm. thing to do. But the reason why it has no value is because it's so easy to do. Yeah. It's not easy to trade. It's not easy to live this lifestyle. It's not easy to be a trader. That's why it's so valuable when you do make it. So in order to have things that are extremely valuable in life and have the most value is you, it has to be difficult to get. Mm -hmm. So understand that it's difficult, understand that it's so hard, but stay consistent and stay disciplined and don't back down no matter what. 100%, 100%, I like that. Now, uh, do you guys like obviously use prop firms in terms of your education or helping people? 
Is that a something that you do? A lot of the students do? we do recommend go the prop yeah. firm route. It builds good habits. Mm -hmm. Obviously, helping people keep risk management. Daily Have you guys ever limits. used prop firms at all? I've used, I've used prop firms. Yes. I'm currently not trading actively on any prop firms, mm -hmm. uh, but I have since 2020 been funded with a few of them. Yeah. Perfect. So like, that leads me to our question then. What would be your top three tips for traders to get funded, for example? To get funded? Ooh. Uh, Great question. I would, say, mm -hmm. I would say don't fall into the trap of risking over 1%. Mm. I think it's common in our industry for people to risk 1%, 2%. And on um, prop firms, the truth is you don't really have that much room, right? If you're risking 2% per trade on a 5%, you know, max daily loss or 10%, you know, max, uh, max loss, that's five trades mm. or three trades on the day and you're out. So I think people may be risking a little bit too much on prop firms. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like, you know, the way we teach, we teach between point 25 and mm. 0.50%, so about a half a percent risk per trade. Nice. Because um, again, it's all about being able to trade another day, like he said. You want to mm -hmm. be able to kind of go through. Uh, so there's that, and then I would also say, don't try to home home run it, right? I see a lot of people promote, I passed my challenge in one day, yeah. right? I, I got funded in three days, and yeah. I'm like, is that really what you want to kind of go into? Like, I get it, it's great, you got you got to your live account. Like, we're all excited about it, right? Mm. We, we love to get to the live account. But that's really detrimental to your, your long-term mm -hmm. you know, trading. So mm -hmm. don't, don't be in a rush, take it slow. There's a reason they give you 30 days. A lot of them have actually extended that past the Unlimited, mm. which I'm a big fan of. So if there are prop firms watching and you guys are not doing the Unlimited, you know, do your traders a favor, <laughs> give, them, give them more time. So it removes that stress of, mm -hmm. I got five days left. Uh, and then the last thing would be just understanding that it's better on a prop firm to just kind of take your money and then not always shoot for 5, 10, 15, 20% on the live account. Yeah. If you have a 100K funded account, even if you make 2%, you could, that's comparative to you know maybe part-time, full-time jobs, depending yeah. on where you, where you live mm -hmm. and cost of living. So you really don't need to be shooting for the moon for 10, yeah. 15, 20% gains. I know we all want to get on the leaderboards. You all, everybody wants the interview and the big shout outs. But I think the, the most profitable traders are the ones that are consistent mm -hmm. uh, and, and pulling money from when they can. So I think having the habit of knowing when to stop, even if you're 14 days away from your payout, just make sure you get that money, secure that money. And if you need to, open up another account. Nothing Definitely. wrong with that. No, I love that. I love that. And what would be your top three tips for the mindset, you know, for traders to develop their mindset? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the mindset is obviously one of the most important things that you have to learn and develop. The first tip that I would personally give is to take it slow, right? Like people rush the process, they try to rush the journey. And ultimately what you're doing is you're rushing your way to more failure because you're not experiencing enough. I truly believe that the more experience you gain, the less fear you'll have. Mm -hmm. The less fear you have, the more easy it is to control your emotions. Yeah. Because what everybody tells you to do is completely remove your emotions where we know that's not possible as humans. But what we can do is eventually get to a point where we can start to manage them, control them a lot better. Yep. Right? So taking it slow would allow you to not rush the process and it'll allow you to ease into things and learn this new language as easy as possible, right? So for one, just take it slow, take your time. The second thing that I will say is actually start to read books like Trading in the Zone, right? Actually start to read those mindset books that are there to help you develop certain strategies to get around the feelings and the things that's gonna come with it. Because again, no matter what level of trader you are, you're gonna experience the mindset hurdles that come with this. Yeah. So read more books, right? Develop yourself more. Listen to mentors that are able to do what you want to do, and they'll be able to really continue to help you out. So just read more, educate yourself more. And the third thing that I would say is, um, I would say journal, mm. right? Because when you're able to document the process, it allows you to actually figure out what's going right and what's going wrong. Mm. That's one of those things that we all know that we should be doing, journaling, yeah. but most people continuously overlook it. But when you journal your trades and you document it, you're able to go back and look at what went right, what went wrong. You have some data to back every decision that you make, and when mm. you have that, it definitely helps you out with the mindset for sure. Definitely. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> There's a dramatic finish to the podcast. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> but no, thank you guys. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And uh, thank make you. sure all the links for Profit Society will be in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And until next time, everyone, take care.